Welcome back to the Release Radar. I'm Chris Muscardi, and today we're taking a look at what made the Rust 1.52 stable release train. 1.52 is about as bug fixed as Rust releases get, with the most significant change being not to the language or the standard libraries, but rather an enhancement to tooling support. Specifically, prior to this release, running Cargo Check, followed by Cargo Clippy, wouldn't actually run Clippy due to how the caching worked. Now it does. If you're unfamiliar with what Cargo Check does, you can take Rust compilation roughly as two major steps. First, the syntactical checking and safety checks, and then the code that goes into the binary is produced. Cargo Check is the first step only, whereas Cargo Build would be both. Here I have a game I've been working on in Rust that I haven't been keeping very clean. It's mostly prototype level code for the game 2048, so I expect Cargo Check to tell me something useful. In this case, Cargo Check is telling me about some unreachable expressions and some unused variables. On top of that, we can now run Cargo Clippy. Cargo Clippy runs additional lints that don't necessarily make sense to run on every program Rust compiles, such as a lint that checks for the usage of the debug macro so that it isn't checked into version control. In this case, Clippy will give us additional, more stylistic changes we can make to our code. For example, in my 2048 project, I tend to write x equals x plus one, and Clippy is telling me that that is a manual implementation of an existing operator and that I could replace it with plus equals one. And now I can choose to turn this on or off as I please. The stabilized APIs in this release mostly revolve around characters and string slices. Arguments as stir was stabilized, but if you don't write macros very often, you may not understand the use case for this. And for that explanation, I'm gonna point you to the person who wrote it on Twitter. They give a pretty decent explanation and also a before and after code example. So check that out in the description. Next up, we have a series of constants on the car, such as car max and car Unicode version. In a similar way to the idea that there's a max size number that can be represented by any given number type. For example, U8 can represent 256 values. Unicode specifies the max car code point. This is now a public const accessible as car max. Additionally, Rust strings are UTF-8, and UTF-8 is a Unicode encoding, and Unicode is version. All of this together means that the methods in the Rust standard library are updated in accordance with a specific Unicode version when they come out. Car Unicode version is the version for your current Rust, and updates to this value in future Rust compilers don't constitute breaking changes for Rust. In this case, we're working against Unicode 13. In between those two consts, we have an additional const called the replacement character. The Rust doc specified that the replacement character is used to represent a decoding error, but it also shows up in places like the common mark spec where for security reasons, the Unicode character 0000 must be replaced with the replacement character. So if you ever need to write a markdown parser, using car replacement character is much nicer and communicates more to readers of your code than using the literal. Decode UTF-16 does what it says on the tin, operating on an iterator. Not all Unicode characters fit in 16 bits, so something called paired surrogates are used to represent values outside of the available range of 16 bits. If one of the values in this pair is incorrect, decode UTF-16 will give you an error for that value. Car from digit lets you convert a digit in an arbitrary radix to a character. So if you like representing numbers as something other than base 10, this one's definitely for you. On the left, we can see that car from digit four with base 10 gives us four. While car from digit 11, which is considered a single digit in base 16, gives us B. Base 16, also known as hex, starts at zero, goes to nine, and then starts at A and goes to B. All characters are valid U32s, but not all valid U32s are valid characters. From U32 can do this conversion safely, while from U32 unchecked can do it unsafely. Both methods are stabilized in Rust 1.52. Unchecked functions can run faster at the cost of you making a personal guarantee to not break the trust of the compiler. It'll be very disappointed in you if you don't uphold your promise. Slice partition point will hand you the index of the starting item in the second partition of a slice. Given an array, we can find the index we're looking for as long as the array is partitioned as we expect. For example, here we use partition point to partition into two groups, one of which is going to be less than five and one will be greater than or equal to five. So we expect this to be the first partition and this to be the second. Partition point roughly uses a binary search. So if this isn't sorted as we expect, we may not get the result we expect. In this case, we'll get the index for number five, which is index four. That brings us to R split once and split once, which do more or less what they say they do. Given a string slice with multiple delimiters, R split once will split on the first rightmost delimiter, while split once is the same from the left. So given the same string slice, if we choose the delimiter to be equal sign, 
For our split, we'll get config equals foo, and then bar as the second value. And for split, which comes in from the left, we'll get config and foo equals bar. These extra methods may or may not be useful for you right now, but having these extra string functions will at least help me in advent of code this year. Which finally leaves us with the constification of the standard library. This is an ongoing process, and every release brings us more functions that can be used in a const context. In this release, these methods are mostly uppercase and lowercase and ASCII characters, so I won't be showing them. But making these functions const means they can run in const contexts, which means they can be executed at compile time instead of at runtime. 